So in case you were wondering, there is something called an orgasm gap. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And as a woman, I take issue with this because if I ain't having fun, no one's having fun. I'm just kidding. No, but really. So what is the orgasm gap? Well, this refers to a disparity in the frequency and ease with which men and women experience pleasure, particularly in heterosexual relationships. Studies have consistently shown that men tend to have higher orgasm rates compared to women. And this discrepancy is often attributed to various factors, including societal norms, cultural expectations, and, you know, just differences in sexual anatomy and physiology, and a few more that I'm going to share today. So if you like this kind of content, please click the subscribe button so I can close the gap between my non-subscribers and my subscribers. So let's talk about why women have such a hard time reaching climax with their partner. A survey of over 1,600 American women ages 18 to 59, out of them, only 29% of the women overall said that they were able to have an orgasm with their partner. 61%, more than twice as many, said that they were able to have an orgasm when they were by themselves. Now, the reason why women are able to have an orgasm more easily with masturbation than with a partner is because that mo most women, while they are alone, you know, they spend time touching and exploring their erogenous zones, uh, they get into it potentially with using their mind or, you know, when they're reading a novel or a book and then something just kind of happens. They get a little excited and they start to, you know, stimulate uh, in order to achieve a more pleasurable outcome. There's no one watching them. Now, I wouldn't blame men for this disparity. I would say both parties are responsible for this so-called gap, and I'll tell you why. Now, women have a tendency to not be as direct as men. They don't explain things verbally. They kind of hint at things and are not as open with their partners as they should be, in my humble opinion. A lot of them don't even know their own bodies. Many of the women that I've spoken to in my coaching practice say that they are potentially afraid of offending their partners because they have had experiences with men in the past who think that they are already sensei masters of the female anatomy and they don't react as graciously when told what to do. We also experience cultural and societal pressures because many women have been taught by their parents or their grandparents, or teachers, religious leaders, the list goes on, that when it comes to intercourse, there are distinct gender roles to be followed. Men are the initiators of sex, and proper women let them lead. It is not uncommon for a woman who rely on their partner to figure out what pleases them to remain sexually unfulfilled for many, many years, if not decades. As a woman, it can be very confusing because, you know, we've had this sexual liberation, but at the same time, we're still terrified to scare a man away by saying the wrong thing in the bedroom, because that is a real possibility and has been for some of us women. Sometimes I suggest to people and or to couples who are just embarking on this journey together to potentially work to finish side by side. You can hear moans and watch for things that she's doing with her body and how she likes to be pleasured and vice versa. I know it's kind of a tease, like the ultimate tease when your partner is getting off right in front of you or next to you, but this is a great way to teach each other how you like to be pleased. Men, one thing you could say to a woman before you ever have intercourse with her is, you know, if you're in a relationship and you think that there's something happening or that she potentially is faking it or not necessarily as into it as you would like, make it safe for her before you have that conversation by saying something to calm her nerves. Like, I want to make you feel as good as possible. Nothing you say is going to scare me away. I am here with you. I want to make you feel safe. I want to please you. So just know whatever you tell me, there's no judgment. I am right here with you and I'm on your side. Some type of variation, maybe not like for the first time, that's a, like a little intense, but just tell her that no matter what, no matter how crazy it is, that she's safe. And another thing that can happen with women, you know, when a partner is involved is that this is a big one. Women can sometimes lose focus on their own pleasure and their own sensations and become preoccupied with how to position their bodies to make them appear more attractive because we're super self-conscious when we're naked. And I know it sounds kind of crazy and men can't believe that women are so self-conscious in the bedroom, 
but it is a real thing. And thoughts like this make it hard for a woman to attain a certain level of arousal high enough uh, for an orgasm to occur. We also become preoccupied just like men do on how to please our partner. You know, is our partner having a good time? Are we doing our best for him as well? Now that can also get into our head and you know, we start to lose focus on our own body and our own pleasure. There's just a lot of things going on in our mind, not to mention the fact that we are thinking about, you know, crap, did we take our birth control pill that morning? <laughs> what if I get pregnant? Like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> There are just so many things that can be taken away from our pleasurable experience. So in addition, you know, trying to please a partner or worrying about how they look, there's other distractions that include worrying about whether the kids or the parents next door are listening. Did we send off the Excel spreadsheets to the accountant? And the number one reason why women don't have an orgasm, in my personal opinion, I think is because of guilt. You know, if a woman is raised to believe for religious reasons that sex is meant only for procreation and within the marital constraints, then she's more likely to experience a huge big dose of sinful guilt rather than an orgasm when she has sex outside of that context. And I'm not saying whatever you do in your personal time, I'm not judging. And I, all I know is I suffered with that. You know, I was raised very Catholic and in a Christian home, regardless of whether you think, you know, this is right or wrong. Again, none of my business, but I'm not a big fan of guilt or shame in the bedroom, whether you are a Christian or you aren't one. I know plenty of Christians follow me and, you know, they'll be in the comments, which is fine, but I'm sorry. I want to talk about this without the Lord uh, God getting involved. Your views uh, and your spirituality is none of my business and mine is quite frankly none of your business either. There are cultural expectations that can also influence a woman's orgasm. Anthropologists have studied sexuality in women across the globe and found that in societies where women are expected to enjoy sex as much as men, women can achieve an orgasm. For example, Mangian women are taught to have you know, not just one orgasm, but preferably two or three. And, you know, if they fail to give their partners multiple orgasms, the men in Mangia, uh, they're not held in high esteem. And Mangia is located in the Cook Islands. I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, just in case you ladies are wondering where that happy place is. <laughs> but in contrast to cultures where people believe that a woman's pleasure is either unimportant or does not exist, women have more difficulty attaining an orgasm. If a woman is expected to have this and she is more likely to be willing to learn or to be taught, you know, how unlike men, most women do actually have to learn how to please themselves. It does not come naturally or easily for us. So for all those who followed me, you know, over to the Fresh and Fit podcast, which was probably, well, it was an interesting life experience. But some of you believe that women shouldn't have one or, you know, who cares about a woman's orgasm. But what you fail to understand is that there are actually many rewards, especially from a biological standpoint, when a woman does reach climax. There has been a great deal of debate as to whether the female climax serves as an adaptive function or whether it is merely a byproduct, much as like male nipples, what what, are they, what purpose do they solve, you know, of evolutionary development. There's no apparent function. Because of the various physiological changes during a woman's orgasm, it could actually increase her chance of becoming pregnant. Women's orgasms could serve as a reproductive purposeful tool and I'll tell you why. From an evolutionary perspective, um, they could possibly even provide information on the quality of the man's genes and the likelihood he would make a good father, thus contributing to long-term fitness. Yeah, see, nothing just happens on accident for all of you people that do believe in spirituality or evolution or God. These things are designed for a reason. Some early theorists hypothesized that when women had intercourse, and it, there was an orgasm induced, the orgasm activated ovulation and that allowed conception to occur. Now, although intercourse induced ovulation does occur in some species, uh, this idea was discarded when it was shown that women actually ovulate in the middle of their menstrual cycle, you know, according to the moons, regardless of whether they have intercourse um, or not. But, 
But, but, but, but, but what they found later is that a theorist proposed that the contractions that occurred during orgasm cause a sort of a uterine suction that moves the ejaculated sperm through the cervix to the uterus and the fallopian tubes, and it's much more efficient than if she doesn't. During sexual arousal, the vagina expands and the uterus and cervix elevate. These changes provide a temporary barrier that reduces the chances of ejaculated sperm rapidly entering the uterus. This gives a sperm time to undergo a sort of like natural selection process whereby the healthy sperm have a better chance of being transported through the fallopian tubes and the incompetent sad sperm are left to die alone. Poor babies. So orgasms come into play by dissipating arousal. At that moment, the passageway is opened for the better sperm to make their journey to create the little babies. Now, low sperm retention is believed to be associated with women's orgasm that occur less than one minute before ejaculation and maximum sperm retention occurs when orgasm takes place shortly after sperm is deposited. If a woman has an orgasm more than one minute before the man ejaculates, sperm retention, according to one study, is the same as if orgasm did not occur. For all of my science nerds out there who want to um, get their stopwatch out, there you go or if you're trying to have babies, these things might make a small difference. Not to mention the fact that she's probably relaxed, you know, she wants to lay down for a little bit to like recoup, enjoy the moment and the flow back of such sperm. If she remains horizontal, could also facilitate the chances of conception. And lastly, for all my MGTOW men out there that are watching who think that women's orgasms don't matter, for women who are with men who are slow to ejaculate, the vaginal contractions that occur during orgasm can facilitate such ejaculation. And when the hormone prolactin is released during orgasm, it may enter into the vaginal cervical or uterine fluids where it can influence calcium entry into sperm. This in turn helps to facilitate sperm entry into the woman's genital tract. Oh my gosh, that's enough science for today. So in conclusion, not only is it a woman's right to have an orgasm, it actually improves her chances of getting pregnant through these various physiological means that I just described. Not to mention the fact that typically when a woman is very much in tune with her body and she enjoys having sex with her partner, women in our evolutionary past experienced these sexual rewards and were more motivated to have sex than women who did not have orgasms. I know I have to explain that, but this is YouTube and well, I'm just being real clear that yes, women would like to have sex with guys that they can orgasm with. Being able to have an orgasm with a certain man could potentially serve as mate selection from the partner's perspective. If a woman is able to have an orgasm with him, it sends him the signal she's sexually satisfied and therefore less likely to seek sexual gratification elsewhere. When men are assured of their paternity, they are more likely to remain committed to a woman and invest in her children. So when you take the time to really understand a, a woman's sexual pleasure, what turns her on, what gives her you know, an orgasm, it's also a good marker of sexual selflessness. And sexual selflessness might extend to other areas, and it might be a sign that the man would make a better long-term partner and father than somebody who is sexually selfish. So in summary, give your woman a no, or help her to get to know her body more so that she feels comfortable. Just be a good dude, lead in the relationship in all aspects. And ladies, if you're watching, go buy a freaking vibrator and learn how to use it. Give your man the treasure chest. All right. I hope you enjoyed this little talk that we've had so that we can finally close that all orgasm gap once and for all. So if you made it this far, you might as well like and subscribe to my channel where I talk about the juiciest of subjects. I'll see you on the next one.